pretty amazing scenery, isn't it? Uh, we're down in South Devon. This is a little break in the Bolt Trail rocks here. And this is a sea fishing venue called Sawmill Point. Now, it's actually one of the few places you can get down to the sea itself. Uh, so hopefully we'll do a little mark review here. And if you are down on holiday, there should be some uh, little pointers just to get you started, really. It really is a truly amazing spot. Uh, there's a lot of potential here for uh, rays, blonde rays, small-eyed rays, pollock, bass and mackerel, of course. It's relatively easy to find this one, the nearest town being Marlborough. Uh, and the big town there is Salkham, of course, where the estuary comes in. Loads of good marks there. Uh, TQ73DS is what you need to put into your sat navs. And that's probably the easiest way to find it, actually. And that will take you down to the Spa, Sawmill Cove Spa. And just before that is a National Trust car park. And you can see there, it's the only bit of... Um, beach really on that set of headland that bolt trail there uh, it's a beautiful beautiful mark uh, lots of potential for the fishing uh, so yeah you go down sawmill cove road you can see it just coming up on the left there i've come down in the evening there weren't too many cars there this is in the height of summer middle of august as you can see it's four pounds for the day uh, after 3 p.m. is three pounds Apparently it goes to charity, um, so it's not too bad, I suppose. And so you come out of the car park, carry on. Obviously, you've got the sea in the background there, and just keep walking down. You can see the gate on the right-hand side. That's where we're going down, and then the road bends round to the left, and that will be the Sawmill Cove Spa. And there we go, the start of this incredible scenery in South Devon. The loads of wildlife birding here. I saw peregrine and buzzards. And then you're simply going to follow your nose all the way down to the cove. It's pretty much a well beaten uh, path down here, lots of tourists use it. And my advice would be to come early morning or in the evening if you can, just to avoid those crowds, particularly in summer, whereas in autumn winter and you're going to be pretty much on your own here could be a little bit dangerous here on the rocks you might need to consider that with uh, life jackets but it is pretty self-explanatory what you need to do to find the mark you've got a gate there and the bridge leading across on the left hand side that's the famous bolt trail over to the right and to the left is where we're going through this gate and so you could at this point go down onto the little beach uh, but I would uh, personally I like to get into a little bit of deeper water just to give myself a variety of fishing and um, so only with the lure rod today but it, it's got huge potential for these uh, rays as well blom ray small eyed ray so you could come well equipped for those with the obvious baits. Baits like sand eel, uh, your mackerel as well. And there we go, look at that. You can see the way the water comes around there, that's got a chance for the bass. Pretty inaccessible all the way along the bolt head there. So yeah, a little bit of tricky conditions. You need to be sure of foot, relatively healthy and fit as well to find this mark. But there are some good pollock in there, I'm sure. And then distance casting onto the sand on the edge of those rock fringes for the ray. Rass, pollock, dare say there's some conga in there as well, strap conga perhaps. The water's beautifully clear for the uh, lure fishing, and that's what we're going to give a go to today. There are some rocky platforms, as you can see. It's certainly very conducive for the lure fishing.
you've got a line of weed. And there's obviously been a, uh, the spring tide is your highest dried out marks of weed. And then your, uh, the wet stuff, which is obviously from the last high tide is a little bit down. So we know we've got falling high tides. So the South Devon Bass Guide over on Instagram has been, reckons that there's some uh, ray out there, blonde ray. Uh, but as you can see, we've only got the light gear today. And I'm just looking into that water to see how much weed and kelp there is. And actually, we might be better off finding some deeper water for this state of the tide. I'm not sure that's going to hold too many fish over that sand there. Although, casting into that surf, maybe for the bass around the corner. Uh, let's go and have a look up the top first, see what we got, and then we might come back to here. I've got to be careful concentrating on filming. I don't go over the edge here. Pretty lethal this one. You've got to, if you're going to have kids with you, you've got to stay well back. Don't, don't, don't get this close. <laughs> so as we're walking along this cliff edge, what I'm looking for. Uh, uh, is a deep mark that shows a lot of rock and kelp for the pollock just coming out here if you look down there you're onto some nice clear water but I don't know if the camera's picking it up there's obviously not as much weed growth there look at that though that is one beautiful view South Devon. I've come right round the headland and this looks like a better mark because uh, well for one reason it looks like a better mark because you can see uh, where the rocks are there's a lot of weed there that's where the pollock will be but the problem is <laughs> getting down there I think we'll go gold side of the fence. I want to have a look if there's any way of getting down there. I've just uh, flushed out a peregrine falcon as well that's uh, flown over here. Beautiful spot for birding and walking. As you can see, even though it's seven o'clock in the morning, there's no one here. Except for a stupid fisherman looking for somewhere to fish. Oh shit. Okay. I think maybe in the interest of safety I might just turn back here. Just have a little nose anyway. Yeah, that's a shame. That would have been be lovely if I could get down there. It's another half hour's walk though to get down there. So I had a little go at a more elevated position up here before we went back round into the cove. And the benefit of fishing somewhere like this is of course you've got a huge variety of uh, techniques you can use you lure fishing as we did today obviously hard and soft plastics feathers for the mackerel sabikis are always good plus you got your bottom fishing you can perhaps bring two rods one at distance one closer in fish and crab baits float fishing as well perhaps some live uh, live sand hill on the float would be good for the pollock just a little bit dodgy here I'd imagine in wet conditions and winter and in those conditions I'd head right onto the beach. You do have to watch the swell here it's worth keeping an eye out just that little bit further out because you'll see these bigger waves coming and the swell's just starting to pick up the dreaded weed most of it it's knocked off.
a little teaser on there, that's a little prawn thing. Okay, we're in. Ah, we're off. <laughs> oh no, we're in. Oh, it just come off. Little pollock down there, beautiful. So there's little pollock down there and they keep following the lure, probably about one, two pounders maybe, but they're not really taking it. And this heavy battered old black minnow, you see where it's had a whack. And then I'm just going to drop it down there rather than cast out because I think they're along this reef where the water drops back. They're looking for bait fish being um, disorientated I think. So let's give that a go. So for these little pollock in these conditions, and I'm just dropping it over that rock ledge, I'm going to go for those smaller lures, that little Yozuri, got my little Shimano one there, the Trident 90S, plus those 6 inch do live sticks. Also because they're so white I can see them in the water, I can actually move them past individual rock water. I'm just going to let it drift down. And most of the action will be the waves. They're fishing quite light now, they haven't even got a weight on them though. I've added a teaser to that, so that's a, like a saltwater fly coming off the fluorocarbon. And then we go back to the black minnow. Get a bit of depth now the water's bit. As for the tackle, a pair of standard beach casters, four ounce leads would have held bottom quite nicely uh, during summer. You might need to up that during rougher conditions. Always tend to use braid uh, on the 30 gram rod for the lure fishing. Um, and then a little warning about winter really, this will be an entirely different looking venue during winter. But in good conditions, LRF, bass rods, float, fishing, um, you know, even dropping it short uh, with the LR LRF rods would be a good way of fishing here. Uh, it really is a beautiful little mark. It does involve that little walk, of course. And sometimes I just pop it into those little gullies. Oh, showing off my casting skills. <laughs> working it across the top of the kelp where those pollock are so we didn't actually catch any fish when we were down here did see some uh, so hopefully you'll have better luck than than I did uh, but please in the comments let us know if you have fished here so thanks very much for watching we've got a number of other uh, sea fishing marks there's a few in Devon and quite a few along the south coast of England um, but I hope you enjoyed watching it uh, please comment if you've been down this way or you know any other marks uh, that might help people out, particularly those holiday anglers, uh, save us a bit of time when we come down. Uh, thanks for watching.